So depression research, specifically for the Cambine study that I'm part of, um, has led us to learn that depression is an extremely complex uh, phenomenon. There's, it's, very, it's a very heterogeneous population. So there's these different islands of patients. Some patients are uh, depressed because of a horrible event in their life, such as you know, a breakup or a death. But on the other end of the spectrum, and there's several of these islands, but on the other end of the spectrum, there's people who are depressed because of deeply physiological reasons. For example, inflammation response. So how do we do this? And the, the best way, one of the best tools that we have right now comes from computer science. It's a branch of artificial intelligence known as machine learning. And machine learning is really great at taking these very complex data sets and figuring out how to model these different islands. Have you ever watched a child, a toddler, attempt to walk? Well, what's happening there is the child's brain has this goal to locomote. They want to move. And what happens is they flop around randomly a lot, if you notice, they're very clumsy. But every time there's a little bit of improvement in that goal, that locomotion, the brain retains what happened there. And eventually, through enough time and a lot of stumbling and falling down, a lot of trial and error, what happens is the muscles become coordinated in such a way so that the goal is achieved. And what's happening here is the brain has learned through all this twitching and falling and doing the right thing, it, 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 what happens is the goal emerges and, and walking happens. Machine learning is exactly the same thing. With the supervised, what we call supervised machine learning, where we have a goal in mind and let's say, let's tell the difference between if someone is going to respond to escitalopram or not. And the machine, you give the machine all this data, you give them uh, data about their brains uh, through fMRIs, uh, through you know uh, structural MRI, through EEG, through molecular, so you know stuff that we get from their blood, uh, the way they answer questions, uh, you know they're even the way they respond to their clinicians, uh, their health records, any data that we can get, um, and we put it together in the machine. What it does is it attempts to learn as much as as best as it can a model that takes some of these variables, maybe a couple brain regions, maybe some microRNA all together, and it will learn what really determines whether someone responds to this drug. So machine learning is basically a massive collection of algorithms, including algorithms that I've created myself, that allow us to capture what's really going on in a patient population. And so, for example, we want to know which patient should really receive escitalopram, right? There's a very uh, a popular antidepressant that people are, are on now, are being prescribed quite often now. So can we predict what, what people actually will respond to this optimally? And the way we can do this with machine learning is by allowing the, all the data that we collect, uh, brain imaging, uh, molecular data, the way they answer questions, even their electronic health records, we combine all of this data and we allow the machine to approach this goal. What patients actually really respond the best to escitalopram? And then a model emerges that we can use to make predictions in the future. And so a clinician will have this model, a patient will come in, and you can use this model and the clinician will say, this is an excellent candidate for an SSRI, like escitalopram, or they're not. And we have to use some other treatment, like uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation, for example.